Today's high watt soundbite is all about the phase button. Wait, whatever happened to the phase button? You know, with all of the advancements that we've made to the digital audio workstation over the past 20 years, why is it that the majority of manufacturers have still not provided us with a dedicated phase reverse switch on every single channel of a Pro Tools mix window, or Logic X mix window for that matter? You know, to this very day in Pro Tools, if I want to check the phase of any given track in my mix, I actually have to insert a plug-in on that track. You know, Pun intended, it's sort of like the phase switch has been phased out. I can honestly say in my 30 plus years of being a recording engineer, I think that that's an absolute tragedy. That phase reverse button is an incredibly important tool to a recording engineer, not just for tracking like live drums and stuff. I'm talking through just about every stage of what I do in the studio, I'm constantly messing around and manipulating phase. So for today's session, I wanna share a few ideas on the phase relationship of the tracks within your mix and how manipulating that phase can just have a major, major impact. All right, so the very first thing I'll cover is my method of creating this phase reverse switch on every single channel in my Pro Tools mix. Now, I just threw up a template session to show how I do this. Very, very typically what I will do before I even start a mix is I'll just take all of the tracks that have been provided to me. I'll take one of those tracks and I'll go ahead and insert a trim plugin in Pro Tools. I've gone ahead and done that. The first thing I'll do is engage the phase reverse button, okay? So that thing is engaged and I will also put that plugin into bypass mode. As Soon as I'm done that, I'll close that thing up. Notice that I always insert that uh, phase reverse switch in the very first slot of my, of my inserts. It's just easy for me. I always know where it is and I can, I can reach for it quickly. So unfortunately, the only way to really copy those settings exactly on that plugin to all of my 24 tracks is I actually have to do them one at a time. Grab the option button in Pro Tools and I literally just drag this thing down into all the tracks. Okay, so I just created a out of phase switch on every single channel of this 24 track kind of like little default session here. You know, there's my workaround in Pro Tools. I'm sort of not willing to accept that there's no phase reverse switch on the channel input. So I just create my own as a plugin. It just sort of allows me to sit in a very critical listening position and give me a very simple method of very quickly reversing the phase of any given track. If you've never set a session up like this and actually sat and played around with, with a flipping phase of tracks in a mix, this is gonna be a very revealing process if you actually take the time to do this because it's unbelievable how much of a difference flipping the phase of any one of your tracks in a mix can actually affect the whole mix. You know, in many cases when I'm previewing tracks, I'll flip the phase on a track and be like, oh no, that's not the right way. And I'll immediately put that thing back in phase. But there are also many, many times that I'll be sitting back in that critical listening position and I'll just randomly grab like one of the bass tracks that I've got going or something and I'll just reverse the phase of that track unreal things happen to the mix. It can really change things up and very often in a really good way. Okay, so I closed that little template session out and I've got a really good example of what I'm talking about with this phase relationship. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up right now. This is just a little work in progress, but it's a great example because I've got a kick drum that I've been working on that is a combination of three different samples that I've that I've got combining for this kick drum sound. Okay, so just for a point of reference, let's listen to a few bars of this little idea. Okay, so the main kick drum that I'm building on here is a combination of three different samples. Let's listen to it all by itself. And now we'll listen to these three samples on their own.
Okay, so all three of these samples sound quite different from one another, but of course they share much of the same frequency range, right? This low end. So when I create bass drums and I build a kick drum and a mix, more often than not, I will use this phase relationship that exists between these various sources I'm using to build the sound. I will utilize that relationship to actually EQ my kick and come up with the ultimate tone that I use. Okay, so once I get all three of these kicks lined up to where there's no flamming going on, everything's playing nice and tight, I listen to that kick drum soloed and I start reversing the phase individually of these different samples. And in some cases, I try combinations. You know, I'll phase reverse the first two of the three samples or, you know, I'll try various different combinations. And in this process, I think you're gonna hear the same thing that I hear, which is really subtle, but really effective changes to the sound of your bass drum. So this kick drum, I've already balanced out and dialed in, and I can see that sure enough, the first of the three samples, I've got a phase reverse switch on. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just play a reference here. I'll let a bar go by just as I have it set up here. And then I'll go ahead and bypass that out of phase uh, plug-in and we can hear the difference of exactly what I'm talking about. It's a very subtle difference, but check it. Okay, I know that's very, very subtle what we're talking about. It's really a character change in the sound. It's like a tonal change. It almost sounds like a slightly different note. So I'm purposely reversing the phase of one of these three kick samples in order to create the EQ and the general tone that I'm after of this kick. All right, well, so far we're talking about some pretty subtle changes, right? When I have a kick drum soloed like I do right now and I'm making these tiny little adjustments, you know, they're pretty subtle. You know, you've got to listen carefully to even hear the differences, right? Well, in my experience, when you unsolo these tracks and lay them back into your mix, checking phase at that point has an even more profound effect because, of course, you've laid that kick drum back in with all of the other bass instruments that are part, making up part of that mix and combining together. So going in and reversing the phase of, say, one of your bass tracks that you've got rolling, in the mix, when everything's playing back, it can make a really big, big difference to the sound and overall tone of your mix. And I just highly encourage you to experiment with this, with just about every track, because that phase relationship is going to be different with every mix you do. Yeah, I just strongly encourage you to set your DAW up so that you've got a phase reverse button available really easy and right now, because if you have to stop and think about it and add a plug-in, it sort of defeats the whole purpose of having that phase button. And take the time to experiment with it. I think you'll find the same thing I have. Many of the effects are so subtle you can't even really hear the difference, but when you get into the kind of bass range of, of instruments and you start flipping phase of things, a lot of really interesting things can be revealed. And sometimes it can absolutely put just the right sound on your mix. It's sort of unbelievable. So the very next time you're mixing and considering inserting another EQ, just take a moment, check the phase of that track against the others in the mix. In fact, take a few moments and try a couple of different combinations with the phase buttons, because I think you're gonna be excited about the results.